Have you ever wanted to make a knife but just never quite managed to make it happen? Well, you're in the right place. Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. So for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, my Friday Fives are basically a place where I discuss things that are going on with the channel, uh, answer viewer questions, all that kind of thing. Um, kind of a grab bag. But today I've got a lot of stuff that to me anyway is super exciting. So I wanna show you something here. Okay, first, uh, when I dropped out of college uh, for a while, I worked as an electrician. So here are the tools that I use for that. Here are a bunch of tools that I inherited from my grandfather in this dusty old uh, toolbox. And this is a drill for those of you who are youngsters. This is what's called a cord. Drills used to come with cords. Why is this stuff significant to me? Well, so let me back up a little bit here. Uh, first thing, I've been intending to do an online streaming course about knife making for years. Um, you know, something that'd be a little more expansive and you know maybe powerful, I guess you could say, than all the YouTube videos that I do. You know, YouTube is a little bit here, a little bit there. It's kind of scattershot. It's all over the place. I just wanted something that was more concentrated. So anyway, finally got around to planning this uh, online course, and I was talking with my sister Ruth, who's kind of my business manager, and I was pitching sort of the, the general knife-making video idea that I had that would cover all kinds of introductory stuff. Uh, we'd make a whole bunch of different knives, whatever. And what Ruth said was, hey, you know, what about a course for people to experience making their absolute first knife? What would that look like? So, you know, this pile of stuff is all the tools that I had when I first started making knives. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a big challenge. This is not a lot of stuff. I had no knowledge. I, you know, I'd never done any metal working in the past. Um, I really came at it from absolute ground zero. And uh, it took me a long time to figure out what I was doing. So it's real easy to look around this shop and assume that, you know, I've had all these fancy tools all my, all my career, but I haven't. This was it, this was where I started. So anyway, after more discussions with my sister, uh, you know, it really became clear that the course that I wanted to do was for somebody like me, the person that I was 25 years ago, no skills, no knowledge, no tools, no shop space. I had absolutely nothing. But the fact is, I did end up making knives, and you know, this place is the result of the trajectory that I went on. So the whole course ultimately worked out to What's that experience of making your first knife like? And how can we cut through all those difficulties, all those mountains that I had to climb over when I first got started on it? And the whole key, as I figured it, was this right here, a file. You can start with just this, a file, and a couple of very simple tools. You know, a hacksaw, some sandpaper, just a few things. And you can actually go out and make a real knife that you could carry out to the deer stand or you could have every day, throw in your truck, whatever it is, and it would work for you. You know, how can you actually make a knife successfully? That's what I was really aiming for. So that you could start here and at the end of, you know, a reasonable period of time, a reasonable amount of work and a very small amount of money, you could have an actual knife. And these are the results of what I made. They're really, they're very nice knives. Obviously, I've been doing this for a while, but if you follow along with everything that I do in this course, experience your first knife, you can make knives just like these. So anyway, the course is gonna be released in a few weeks. If you're interested in getting more information about the course, uh, click the link in the cards, or there's a link in the description that says, all things Walter. So if you click on that, then you hit the link for experience your first knife. I'm super excited about it. You know, if, if you've been sitting around for years thinking, oh, I'd like to make a knife, but there's this and there's that, and there's that, there's a way. And, uh, you know, give it a whirl. Um, I think you'll be glad you did. 
Okay, next thing to mention, well, it's kind of two things, actually. So, this knife right here is a new design that I came up with recently. Um, it's, it's part of my Tactics Armory knife line, so for those of you who aren't familiar with it, I have a, you know, kind of semi-production, mid-tech line of knives that are called Tactics Armory, and uh, kind of the centerpiece of making those knives is a very small CNC machine back there, a Tormach. I've had it for, gosh, seven, eight years now. Um, and it's just, it's time to kind of step up to a more professional, larger uh, CNC machine. More on that in a second. Um, but also, not to spend too much time going through the history of this, but when I got started with Tactics Armory, uh, you know, I designed a whole bunch of knives and then I decided, you know, what I wanted to really do was to move into making pocket knives. So, you know, I came up with this design right here and I really spent about two years refining that design and, uh, you know, I ended up kind of neglecting all the rest of my um, Tactics Armory stuff because uh, I was spending so much time and effort on this knife. Ultimately, I got to the end of it and I was just like, I can't make this knife at a price point that I think is reasonable for a knife like this. And so I just abandoned it. I just walked away from it. And the result was, and you know, I moved to this new shop. There just a whole bunch of things went on and I sort of, you know, de-emphasized um, Tactics Armory for a while. It's just time to get back to that, to revive the line, and uh, so I'm gonna be designing a whole bunch of new knives. I'm super excited about that. Uh, and this, you know, this knife that I just showed right here, which is gonna be called the Nightfall, this is my first prototype of it. Um, that's gonna be the first knife that I'm gonna introduce. But a key point to that is that I'm gonna be getting a Haas uh, mill, which I'm gonna be sticking right over there where my little John Deere is right now and that'll be coming in a month. It's really gonna change how I'm doing things around here and very excited about that. You'll hear more from me on that later. So uh, finally, I like to share news from some of my uh, listeners and Patreon subscribers and so on. Uh, so today I'm gonna read a note from Jeff Shirk. Uh, he's uh, been a long time viewer and I'm pretty sure he's a Patreon supporter. Anyway, I've had some great notes from him, uh, you know, in, over the time, and uh, so he sent me one today that I just wanted to read. It's a long note, and I, I uh, kind of excerpted stuff from it, but anyway, uh, I'm just going to read this because I think this is a great example of how somebody, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Jeff was sending pictures of his work uh, to me for my um, annual viewer knife uh, video that I usually do in January. Uh, I think he's been doing them for several years now. Um, could be wrong about that. Uh, anyway, um, he's made a lot of progress over the years and I just kind of wanted to brag on him here, but he's, this is a fun letter. So, all right, so here goes. Hello, Walter. After a fruitless year of trying to sell my knives on a website, I stopped all that and looked into showing my knives to the public where I live. In July, while I was showing at my third small event, a fellow who'd, booked it, who'd looked at my knives told me that if I showed them at the Illinois State Fair in De Coin, I guess is the name, um, I could probably sell all of them. I called the fair headquarters, he signs up, and next thing you know, he's at the state fair. So my, knife and, my, my wife and I spent a very nervous, for me, few days securing liability insurance, ordering business cards, printing some business cards for home, all this stuff, and he finally gets ready uh, uh, and he goes out there. Even though there were some very long days, we enjoyed our time and I grew comfortable with the routine. I learned that I did not have to say much except for hello and thanks for stopping by. If people wanted to talk, they talked. If people wanted to buy, they bought. I didn't have to do anything to make anything happen. Word got around the fair pretty quickly that I was showing knives and it had nothing to do with me. The lady who rented me the space uh, that I was using told lots of people that I was in the exhibition hall so people came looking for me. I wasn't prepared for how excited people were to look at my knives. Retired farmers and retired coal miners knew what they were looking uh, at when they saw my knives, and they wanted to buy them. 
I priced some of my first knives very low because I had had them for a long time and I wanted them to move on, and because some were clumsy prototypes. But young people who wanted sharp knives for their kitchens bought them. Lots of people who did not need to buy knives looked at my table and told me my knives were beautiful. A pair of state troopers happened by and one of them said, the little ladies in the grandstand office told us we had to come here to see you. One of the state troopers was about to retire and wanted to know, and wanted to know how I got started in knife making because he thought uh, he would like to do the same. I told him about your videos because the one in which you explain how to make a knife with hand tools is the one that got me started in 2018. I showed up to the fair with 34 knives and sold 24 of them. I earned enough money to cover my space rental, the liability insurance for a year, and the ice cream and brisket sandwiches we ate when we got tired of the snack food we brought with us. I was able to put 800 bucks in savings to spend on steel, quenching oil, and two by 72 belts. And then he asked me some, some other questions. Anyway, many thanks, Jeff Shirk. I just love that note because it really tells you uh, you know, it, sh it shows you the trajectory that you can go on when you make knives. You can make knives, make one or two knives, you know, maybe a year, or start on a knife and keep working on it for five years. It, it, it doesn't matter. Everybody's got their own little path to take. But, you know, as they say, the journey of a thousand leagues uh, begins with one step. So anyway, uh, if you guys are interested in taking that first step, do check out the, uh, the link and uh, maybe there's something for you, maybe there's not. But um, if you are thinking about making a knife, no matter where you go, whether it's me or other people on YouTube, remember, this is where I started, you know, with a bunch of lineman side cutters and stuff that were no use for making knives. And uh, here I am today. All right, guys, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com